Oh, yeah. All yes, right, welcome to Talking Shop. We have a full house <laughs> today. Ernie yeah. has made an appearance once again. My, man, it's been forever since we've had four people around the table. We've never had four people in this room, I don't actually. Think so. Uh, so you have to go back to the old videos to see four. But uh, uh, so that's good. It's nice to have you guys here. Um, we've got a here. great text, a challenging text. Luke 14, 25 to 35. Uh, a whole lot of discussion about discipleship. About repentance, um, about salt, and what it's good for. No. And poo. <laughs> That's right. So uh, take a moment to like and subscribe. Let's get after it. Yet I'm still welcome in the arms of the king. Now that I think about it. I have punched. All right, Luke 14. 25 to 35. Now great crowds accompanied him. And he turned and said to them, What? Get behind me, Satan. No, no. not here. Okay. If anyone comes to me and does not what? What do they have to do? Um, hate. I hate, hate. to say it. <laughs> but it's hate. Yeah. We hate. This is not a Mother's Day passage. That yeah, that's right. That's right. Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. <laughs> oh, boom. There it is. Uh, hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. That in and of itself is probably enough to preach on this Sunday if you, you know, right. uh, want to unpack that. Might be enough to empty out your pews. Right. <laughs> uh, so you read this. This is, again, we've had a string oh, of these man. in Luke where we kind of said, if you're reading this up front, you, you kind of got to preach on it. Because you oh, can't right. leave that hanging there. Yeah. You can't say, so you need to hate your mom. Yeah, this, anyway, is, this is the gospel. We're gonna, <laughs> the gospel. <laughs> anyway, we're going to look at a different text. Um, so what, what's he getting at there? So they are following him. We, we still can't leave this out of the context. He has set his face toward Jerusalem, right. chapter yes. 9. So he is on his final journey to Jerusalem. Yep. The messianic fervor is coming. The great crowds are gathering. This is the guy. We want to be there when he goes into the kingdom. We, 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 want, to, we want to be part of whatever he's doing. Right. And Jesus says, in order to be part of what I'm doing, you got to leave behind everything else yeah. that you're walking away from now. So I don't necessarily so expect the large crowds a little later on. Right, right. Yeah, he's preparing them for the kingdom that's coming. He's, so is he? Is it the preparation and part of that is some sort of separation from the relationships and the ties you currently yeah. have? Yeah, I wonder if it's not even, you know, if you're going to take his humanity uh, uh, seriously, I wonder if it's not even him kind of telling himself this. Hmm. Right? Um, yeah. I so mean, Matthew's gospel, the sim same passage, um, it lightens it up just a little bit. It says, if you don't love me more. Right. And this one just says right. hate. Yeah. So Luke employs that word that really gets our attention. Yeah. Sure. Because we're thinking about the commandments, aren't we? Love your father, honor your mother and father. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, well, how do you mm. do that if Jesus is telling us to hate? But it's a, it's a relative. Yeah. And it goes back to the first commandment, which we've kind of been talking about. What are the greatest commandments? Sure. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. How are you going to do that unless by comparison um, there's nothing else competing? Yeah. Okay, well, so you can use it that way clearly as a comparative. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think hate highlight. works that way anyway, right? In, in, is it Malachi or Micah? I think it's Micah. Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. Right. God didn't despise Esau. He still blessed him. He still sure gave him did. a okay. bunch sure. of stuff. Yeah. But he loved Jacob. And right. so all of his efforts went into That's Jacob. Good. All of his no. focus went into yeah. Jacob. Um, so it's not, it's not the hate in the, in the terms of you know, discounting and not thinking there's any good in any of that kind of yeah. stuff. And, right. and, that, and it makes sense when you run it through that it's not just your... Father, mother, your wife, your children, brothers, sisters, because it builds up to your own your life. Your own life, yeah. right? And right. So that's the comparison. Like you're yeah. not holding on to this uh, above all things, but you're holding on to. Yeah. yeah. So this is when that disclaimer disclaimer would come up on the video. But you know, if you really hated your own life, you'd commit suicide. Sure. Which 
Nobody yeah. does, right? Right. Anybody who's contemplating suicide or has somebody they know who's contemplating suicide, please call the suicide hotline. Now. That's the right. disclaimer. Right. Anyway. Right. Right. Well, that got dark. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but it moves on from there. Uh, that really, Ernie's contemplating. Whoever so. does Stunned. not do what? So it moves from. So we could even say this way. It further describes what is this life he's calling you towards of hating your own life, mm -hmm. uh, hating these relationships, those kind of things, and following him. He That is encapsulated in what image? What is he saying this is? Cross. Cross. Yeah. Cross. Right, bearing a cross. Yep. Yeah. Um, obviously, as you just keep proceeding through the passage, it doesn't get any easier. Um, and it's just a tough thing to preach. But, um, I mean, like for example, is Jesus calling people to their f actual death, or is there some type mm. of metaphoric death that he's prescribing here to get into the kingdom, to be his disciple? Um, well, what do you guys think? Is it, a, <laughs> is it a metaphoric death or is it an actual death? And I think if you look at the cultural context, um, we know the answer to that, because all, all the apostles save John were killed for their faith because they were a disciple of Jesus, they followed after okay. him. Yeah. Even Peter, literally, as um, the legend says, he was crucified yeah. upside down. Well, to carry your own execution stake in the yeah. in the Roman, uh, you know, context sure. means that you have been condemned by those who are in control of the world. Yeah. So I think there's I think there's part of that too that you're also going to see that, you know, you may hate your own life, but and this isn't in Luke's gospel, but the world's going to hate you. Yes. And so unless you're willing to be condemned by the world, yeah. right, and, and, and disregard everything that they find value in, yeah. um, it's going to be hard to follow Jesus where yeah. he goes. Right. right. I mean, and don't you think there's an American factor that challenges a proper hermeneutic of this as well? Because... We are friendly, we have freedom of religion, but you preach this text in another part of the world where, for example, we were talking about China, underground church, they're gonna get it. It's oh, like yeah, it's yeah. Mark Twain mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. It's not those parts of the Bible that I don't understand that give me a problem, it's those parts that I do <laughs> yeah, understand. This is very clear. Yeah. And to Jews, you know, they got that whole tearing of the clothes thing. If they find out you're a follower of Jesus, the crucified Messiah, he's no Messiah for us. And we will disown you if you follow him. And right. that's th that culture back then. Mm. And you can find cultures today with the same thing. Islam, sure. you know, sure. Um, you become a Christian, you can't publicly make that known or you'll die. Yeah. Okay, they get it, it's very straightforward. Yeah. We understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. So maybe this is, uh, in our context then, uh, you know, preaching in, you know, suburbia, North America, this is gonna, you gotta do a little more work maybe yeah. to, um, to get there, you know, that this would be plain somewhere right. else or a different time yeah. would be clear. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, We're not preaching your best life now. You know, it's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if we started a building project and came to the end of it, we'd just go to the bank and get more credit. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. It's not that <laughs> it's, hard. It's not that hard. <laughs> so, uh, Ernie, let's get Ernie involved here. Um, after he talks about the cross, uh, he how does that discussion move into this language of building a tower or going to war or those kind of things? Oh, uh, there is a, you know, I think it goes back to, or goes ahead of, if you look at verse uh, 33, so therefore anyone of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. I think it's that, that preparation uh, of what it means to take up the cross and follow him, uh, the call to, you know, to self-denial and, 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 and the call to repentance as well at the end of the day, stripping away Mm -hmm. Everything of ourselves mm -hmm. and trusting in the one who saved us, who actually uh, died the death for the sins of the world. And, and again, here, I think preparation, um, if there's a builder in your congregation, they definitely know. If sure. you've ever done a building project or someone who does building for their job, they know every detail of, of how it's going to be. Now, as a Christian, you know, uh, I think we, maybe this is a nugget. I've never preached it like this before, but... Uh, Preparation, 
as a Christian, mm-hmm. what does that look like? Are we just right. kind of going willy nilly and, and say, oh, That's her, I'm mm-hmm. just gonna live as I please and, you know, taking up the cross when it's convenient, but you know, you know, and when it comes to everything else in life, we talked about budgets earlier or building project. We're mm-hmm. so good at that. Yeah. Well, some of us are, I'm not sure. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not kind of, uh, maybe not <laughs> at that point, but you, it's this, it's this really this honest call to what God has called yeah, us to do. I like that. And a lot of times we just kind of, uh, don't want to talk about poop. Well, we will later, but we poo poo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we poo poo that reality of, yeah, this is part of my life. Like yeah. we just kind of hmm. compartmentalize that and, oh, preparing for a war, uh, sitting down before figuring out, assessing whether we should go to war uh, with another kingdom or building this building. I'll just yeah. kind of go piece by piece and see where it goes. Yeah, right. Um, no, we we prepare, and I think Jesus is really, as you said, he's he's going getting closer to the cross, and yeah. the message is uh, urgent. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm watch, talking to look. a visitor, and he's becoming a member of our church about baptism this week. Yeah. And it all sounds wonderful um, until you really hear the whole story. It's like baptism, it's romantic, everyone's gonna be cheering you on, go, they're all supportive. Um, First you're gonna drown. Yeah. You're gonna die. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, You gotta die to yourself um, and you unite with Christ in his death. Um, Then there's the resurrection with Christ for our justification. But there's both sides of it. There's death before there's new life. Right. And uh, we forget that in America, we make it way too easy, too palatable. Yeah. And, and speaking of baptism, you know, like I know Dr. Just, when he taught me, he said, uh, he said, when you're baptized, you are entering into the apocalyptic battle yeah. that you've never seen yeah. before. Yeah. So this is that preparation, like you know what you're yeah. up against as a Christian, um, sin, death, power, the devil, the, yeah. the, power, the evil forces of darkness. And, and uh, here the Lord is preparing them um, in that call. Um, does that mean, is it saying that we have to do this ourselves, uh, in a sense of our own human will? And the answer is no. Uh, but again, through faith, um, at the end of the day, uh, here we see uh, the cost that is ahead of us, but also the cost that Jesus paid uh, for, for us. us. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amen. Is that where our preparation is? Going back to your nugget, I liked your nugget of, of preparation. I guess the question becomes, you know, for this crowd following Jesus and then for us today, I'm sure much of this crowd would go, oh yeah, I'm his disciple, similar to the right. couple of weeks ago. We, or last we time, ate and drank in your presence, we right? Taught you taught in our streets. streets. Yeah. We know right? of you. So, so <laughs> what does is, what is preparation look yeah. like, especially yeah. for those who feel comfortable that they are indeed you know, followers of Jesus and disciples? Yeah, of yeah at the end of the day, that? it's the life of Repentance, mm, right? It's yeah. the uh, because at the end of the day, we not only do we see our sin, but we rest on. Which, so not seeing God through, not seeing God through our stuff, but only right. seeing God. Is that if that makes any sense, right? Sure. Many times we see God through our blessings. Oh, oh thanks, oh, thank you, God, because oh, you're there, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but a life of repentance is not seeing any of that. It's only seeing seeing God. Because at the end of the day, repentance always yeah. rests upon. Yeah. The Sunday school answer. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it, well, hmm. I was thinking uh, a few weeks, two weeks ago, when I preached the um, the, the narrow door text. We already referenced mm-hmm. that earlier, but the uh, that that too is this, seems to be this image of repentance. Like yeah. you're going to exactly. come through it, you're going to strive to get there. Right. But what is it? Is it your work? No, it's not your work. Right. It, it's Christ. Right. But that will strip you of everything. Yeah. I guess back to yeah. that baptism language you were talking about. Th- this is. An inherently violent act because yeah. it will kill you, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right? So that you have Christ yeah. alone. That's repentance, right? right? You will cling only to Him. Uh, so it's pulling that away. And I like that. I mean, I think that's a good way to preach this, um, which would, would would bring the law and the gospel through, and kind of that clarity is, is say, you know, now is the time of preparation, right? Yeah. yeah. But, like right. Like well, this isn't we're not playing around like yeah. that kind of thing like uh, they're, they're who, all who plays around building a building yeah exactly right, right. like who's going to war we'll figure out that corner of the building <laughs> later right yeah, like, are, who does that right yeah, yeah they have the whole yeah. blueprint out yeah 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 every detail before they build right yeah 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 yep. yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, count the bottom line. D Day, D Day took months. It wasn't like they came up with the idea and said, "Next week, <laughs> right. we're going to go invade That's France." Right. That's right. And they knew <laughs> there were going to be deaths. Many yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, 
<laughs> and you get that, so therefore anyone of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple, right? So it, it's, again, I think that's that repentance language. Hmm. What, mm-hmm. it, what is it you think you've got that's going to make you, right? You know, and that's well, another I, tension, right? Nothing. Like if yeah. it's uh, the impenitent person, the, the, let's say even the secure sinner who just says, oh, you know, he's talking about them, but really throughout the last month of readings it's all about where our treasure is yeah. there our mm-hmm. heart yeah. will also be so it it's just a constant I thing. can't help humbling I can't help but think of the I don't agree with everything Bonhoeffer has written but that famous <gasps> line you know when Christ calls a man he bids him come and die that's mm. what we're talking about this is what Jesus is letting them know right up front I'm going to die and if you're going to be my disciple you need to die to yourself too, and it may mean physically dying for the gospel. May not. Yeah. Maybe well, just daily picking up be your a good cross title for a sermon. <laughs> Come and die. Come yeah. and die. Yeah. Right. And I wonder if you know putting it again in the context of the crowds because they don't they don't necessarily know Jesus is going to the, to his death. Right. They only know he's going to usher in the messianic kingdom, which mm-hmm. we know differently. Right. But I wonder how many of them, kind of like us, are not thinking of that messianic kingdom in terms of a brand new thing God is doing, mm. but how my life that I have now is going to be exactly the way I want it. Just a little change and tweak right. into the better things right. that, I, right. that I have. And Jesus says, no, you got to, if you're going to go this path, all of that has got to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to mm-hmm. leave all of that behind um, in order to, uh, to make this journey. Yeah. So, all right. So if all that wasn't enough to preach on, <laughs> we're going to throw two more verses in there. Yeah. Um, Switch gears. Uh, this ah. Translating this was kind of fun when we were working on it, right? Salt is good. That's clear enough. Of course it is. But if uh, the English translation I have is, if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? Uh, in the Greek, it was something like, uh, if salt is... Um, uh, what was, what was it like? Foolish. Be, oh, foolish. Yeah. Moronic. Yeah. Moronic. Yeah. Uh, how will it be yeah. um, useful day. again or something like that? Yeah. And so, um, all right, so you get that, right? This question. It is of no use either for the soil or the manure, the Here poop pile that uh, Ernie poop was talking pile. about. It is thrown away. Poop. Who, can't, who has ears? Let him hear. Uh, so, what? In the world's going on here. Why, <laughs> why include this with this whole uh, discussion about the cost of discipleship? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe going back to those crowds and the same thing we have here, all of those crowds are going with him going, I'm his disciple. I'm following him. Yeah. I'm, I'm headed out there. How many of them are going to end up, if you will, losing their saltiness? Yeah, I'm thinking um, if you took an American, quote unquote, American approach to this. And we did preach your best life now. Um, We've just lost our saltiness. Mm. You know, if the church is not preaching any different message from the world, your best life now, theology of glory, um, then there's no message left. You might as well just be another cacophonous voice out there on the horizon amongst all of them if we don't preach what we were just talking about. Um, There's the saltiness. There's Mm. the sting. Yeah. Yet the reality is is that salt cannot lose its salt. Salt, true salt, cannot lose its saltiness. Yeah, Yeah, which is, that's the way I was kind of thinking of it is, you know, to, and again, it's what he's saying, to be a disciple Mm -hmm. is to bear a cross and follow him. That's what it means. It's what it is. You don't get one without the other. Right. You don't get non-salty salt. Right. Yeah. This is what salt is. This is what a disciple is. And this is is. what salt will always be. be. And so if we went back to the the language of repentance uh, and clinging to Christ, this is what discipleship is, period. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're you're not that, then you're not a disciple. You're not salt. Right. And and you're not useful then. (laughs) And and once you are that, by the grace of God... That is who you are. That is yeah. that is your identity. And it, I think it's important that for the hearer to always be cognizant of of maybe the possible. You know, we always preach and we preach and we we say words. Yeah. When we preach, well, I hope usually. so. I we do. <laughs> but 
a better <laughs> than that. We do have some sign I do, yeah. But no, no, like it, it's important that, you know, we're, we clearly convey this because a lot of legalistic right. ears will say, oh, cost mm. of discipleship, mm-hmm. 10 steps on how to be a better Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. And we have to be yeah. cognizant of that yeah. with our words because yeah. people will hear it no matter if we, we won't say it, yeah. but people will interpret yeah. those yeah, hear it, will. it with that. So it's very important yeah. that we... It's all or nothing here. This isn't a... <sighs> yeah. uh, when, I, when I was in the seminary, Dr. Nagel would say, uh, um, you know, the gospel or, you know, it's not, it's, it doesn't operate in the realm of fractions. Okay. So it's not a matter yeah. of like, you do this, I do this, you right. do this. It's not this fractional kind of way. It's, it simply is or it isn't, yeah. right? It's all, it's de- all demanding on that. Because the game of fractions is a game we're going to play yeah. of, yeah, show me the steps, let me do these things. And here he's saying, no, I want, I want everything. It's absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah, um, that's right. And, and that, there, that raises the big question. Well, how do I give everything? Well, you can't. You have to die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like if we go back yeah. that way, like right. that's, how, that's how you give everything. Well, and, and just to follow it down through, Jesus took up our cross for us. Mm. He mm-hmm. is the foundation stone on yeah. which we build. He is the general who goes out and fights our yes. battles for us, yeah. right? So, yeah. you know, in, in the midst of following him, all the work is still not being done by you. Yes, it's, right. it's, it's, it's still being Christ. done by the one who's leading you into all still of those things. Sunday school answer. Because like uh, when you read this text, I mean, a lot of times, and I come from different, a, a different Christian background when I was younger, so yeah. this was a lot, of, a lot of times taken as Mike. Come on, get yeah. it done. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, right. and it, Work it it was terrifying because you're like, okay, I have to do all this and I haven't, what do I do then? Yeah. yeah. But and I love my like, little brother. I mean, not always, but I do. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah. it's, it can't be terrifying if we don't preach it right. Yeah. yeah. So, nope, uh, hey, good stuff there. Uh, good conversation. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, take a moment to like and subscribe. Uh, add your thoughts to this. Uh, it's a challenging text uh, to preach. Uh, one that, again, if you're reading it, you kind of have to preach it, I think. Um, but, um, yeah, God bless your preaching. Te amo.